But, you know, I remember growing up in Massachusetts and my dad's friends. And if anybody bought a foreign car, well, you were a weirdo. You right. know, it was like, hey, he's kind of a strange duck. He's got a Volkswagen. <laughs> right? What? what? Yeah, you know, the German thing there with right. the little thing on. There's just, I just love the way it sounds. I, yeah. I love this car. I love the way VW sounds. Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Uh, today we're doing my favorite category, original and unrestored. This is a 1955 Volkswagen Beetle. As you can see, the paint is original. Uh, we're going to talk to the owner here in just a second. Um, it's fun to find them this way. You don't find these anymore. When I was a kid, Volkswagens were all over the place for a couple of hundred bucks, and then they just disappeared. So to, Try and find a time capsule like this is pretty rare. Let's meet the owner, Matt Jacobson. Matt, come on in. How you doing, my friend? Jay, good thanks to see you. Thanks for bringing this. When yeah, you, no, thanks for having me. When you called me and told me about it, I, I was intrigued. Now, this is obviously later. Somebody added yeah, that. Yeah, the car had, an, it had a radio originally. Okay. It's got the original Motorola M radio in it. Okay. And you know what Motorola stands for? No. Well, back in the day, when they came out with car radios, the most popular form of me was, was a Victrola. Right. With the rules. So, when they came out with something for your car, it was a motor roller. Great. So motor as an engine. Love it. And rolling, that's, that's where it came from. And that looks like a later piece. Is that, do you think that's original? Yeah, piece? I know. It's probably period correct, but I don't think it was original to the car. So where did you find it? I found it uh, from the second owner who had got it from a guy in Indiana. He was in Washington, in Maryland. And I found it on the Samba, which is the Volkswagen sure. Porsche uh, forum. And I've been looking for it. I only collect unrestored cars right. and started buying unrestored Volkswagens. And as you said, there just aren't any unrestored Beetles around. I mean, this car was probably worth $25 in the 70s. Right. And the fact that it didn't become a dune buggy. But I, you know, I love that both he and the guy before him, you know, and then we finished it as this idea of preservation, not restoration. Right, right. Now this doesn't look factory. This looks like some accessory. It's an accessory, but period correct. Right, right, because this looks rather crude. I see the Germans, what is this? this <laughs> we cannot have this, must be some American thing. We cannot have this thing like this with the nut coming through here. <laughs> you know, I mean, but what's good about it, you can't steal it, because it's actually the door closed is what keeps you from oh, being able I to get see. it off. So actually it's a surprisingly good design. You know, my huts, these work wonderfully well to keep the heat off the dashboard of the right. car. The only trouble is, I've got one on my Hudson Hornet and it comes to here, and the previous owner told me he was going down the highway and he hit a flock of birds and they all got, <laughs> they it, got stuck it, underneath. It, it, it was like some Alfred Hitchcock <laughs> movie. The birds are right here in his face and he's, he's got his hand out the window at 60 miles an hour trying to get them out of there and they just keep on. So I'm all, that's what I no, or you have. The, or you have the, the stoplight problem where you're like, you know, if you oh, don't you have, can't see, you if you don't have the, the prism, stoplight. you can't see the stoplight. But this, yeah. one's, this one's set up pretty good. Now, that's interesting. You mentioned the prism. Nobody knows what that is. They used to sell a device you put on your dashboard. It would, the stoplight would shine, and you would be able to see that, that, the, that the light had changed. I've got a 51 Chevy pickup that's uh, with a visor, that's a Fulton visor that's long, and I'm constantly, you know, doing that lean either out the window or... Yeah. Now, what color was this originally? Was it blue? It was green. The was green, green. Is the, green is the original <coughs> color. Because I noticed the rear trunk is blue. So the car was originally green. Mm -hmm. It had been painted at some point in its life in Indiana, it was painted blue. Right. Um, and then, luckily, it, the entire car inside and out was painted with white latex house paint, <laughs> which, you know, served as kind of a modern Cosmoline, right? right, it, just, right. it really protected everything. And we, you know, the process of getting it back to this color was goof off in a Scotch Bright pad. Yeah, that's what. And yeah. so the original, the first guy in, in Indiana who started, he started doing that. The second owner in Maryland started doing that, and then we finished it here doing that. Well, wouldn't the Scotch Bright take off the original paint as well? No, yeah, I got. You know, we were just careful. Yeah, we were okay. just careful. Because it does. I, I, is this a clear coat that's on? What's on there? No, it's uh, it boiled linseed oil. Linseed oil. Okay. Because it looks like one of the, you know, when you get that Sears antiquing kit, right. you know, um, you <laughs> No fake patina over here, Well, Jay. that's what someone said to me, is that, did he add the patina? I said, no, 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 I'm sure it's all original. But that's what the linseed oil does. And if you ever use linseed oil, it's really dangerous. Because Flammable. you put it down, and while you're sitting there, it will burst into flames. 
So be careful with linseed oil. Always soak the rag in water or leave it outside. Or and, the, and the car is really dry. I mean, it has no rust. It's never, you know, and you can kind of see it now. It's never been hit. All the body panels are original to the car. And um, I just feel really, I just felt really lucky to get it. It was one of those stories when yeah. I found it. The guy, you know, I knew he was very ambivalent about selling it. And I was here, he was in Maryland, and I knew I had to kind of get it done that day or I would right. never right. get it from him. So I had him drop it at a colleague of mine's house near DC and just pay him. Right. And I just get because one more day and he would have changed his mind. It, this is a six volt system, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. And how many miles on the car? You know, it's a 55,000 on the, on the odometer. And, you know, there are no one, you know, not detailed and service records. And 56, yeah. Yeah, and so <laughs> I don't, you know, I, if you look at the car and how straight it is, yeah. it's original motor as well, that I, I really think that that is original miles. Now, is it kilometers or miles per hour? Is it's it, in miles per hour. So as an American export. It was, yes, it was sold to an American serviceman. It was delivered in Belgium. Oh, okay. And then he brought it over. Because that was the thing back in those days. If a serviceman bought a car in Europe, the U.S. government would ship it back. Right. So a lot of these cars came back. Because I know it has a lot of unusual features. Um, this is, uh, you didn't really see this too much in the American stuff. No. But these lights, what, what are these lights here? So I found, so these are Bosch uh, fog lamps. Right. I just luckily found these with the brackets in that green. Oh, okay. So I found them, you know, recently. I just wanted a great set of fogs for it, but they had to be the right ones. Right, and you, so have, you have them on the back as well. Yeah, I've got one, a stop one on the back. Okay, and they're, and they're six volt too. So they're huh? six volt. Okay. And these were NOS uh, lens guards I found. Right, right. I'm trying to think of what's there. Now, it has the water squirters, which is unusual. Yeah, it's, it, it, you know, I, it doesn't work, but. No, but this must have been a more, um, upscale VW right. I mean, with just these little just little things like that. 55s are neat. I mean there's a lot of stuff that's unique to a 55 semaphores. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm sure we'll look at. Now the English call these trafficators or semaphores, I guess, yeah. Now, did this um, is this a leather interior or vinyl? No, no, vinyl. And oh, when yeah. I and when I got the car, every seam on that, every seam was blown out. Cuz yeah. you can imagine these were these were inexpensive cars. Right. And the, every seam was blown. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I figured, okay, I'm going to put it back, kind of a Frankenstein, you know, baseball stitch just to right. get it back together. And just a wonderful guy found, you know, put it back together and it looks, it's unreal. Yeah, you can save original interiors. You know, I've got my uh, 1959 Fiat Milicento and it has the original interior, but it was, the thread was breaking and coming right. apart. And rather than just redo it, we managed to stitch it up. and. I'm so glad we did it that way. I mean, I tried, I tried desperately to save the original headliner, but it was a mohair headliner, and it was oh. just, a, that wasn't going to happen. Oh, so we replaced okay. the headliner. It's the original mats. Right. You know, the carpet in the car, like the early Porsches, um, a rubber mat with carpeting on the side. So it's the right color carpet, because I had that, and then uh, the original mats. Did the American cars have these two? Until m middle of 55. Oh, okay. So, uh, had that, and then the other unique, the other thing that's unique to this car, which I'm sure we'll look at, are the heart tail lights. Oh yeah, let's come around back here. So the heart tail lights were, you know, again, a lot of this stuff is not for sure when they actually ended, but mid by mid '55 they were gone. And so the heart tail lights, you can see on the top of the light. That's not the turn indicator because the turn indicator is the semaphore. Right. But when the lights are on, it gives you kind of a running light. It's a glass piece that looks like a heart, so they're the heart tail lights. And this is a stoplight? Yeah, it's a stoplight. Okay. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, well, because the taillights were so tiny, yeah. a lot of guys ran these bigger stoplights. And what the was the last year of the split window? You so I think, it was, I think it was 52. Oh, okay. Yeah, 52, yeah, it was early, wasn't it? Yeah, 52 yeah. is a split. Okay. And uh, let's open it up. Now, that dumb question. Um, I also thought it was a round tail. Tailpipe, it, but that not. may have been round at one point. Oh, that, yeah, you know, that's something. I must have gotten yeah. squashed. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Can we open this? Sure. Up? Wow, it's nice and clean. Obviously, you rebuilt the motor. Rebuilt the motor, but put everything back on it. So. And, and this is what 36 horsepower. 36 correct? horsepower. What is that? Is that an original piece? No, that's not original. Okay. You had to pick that one. Huh? No, the, no. The air cleaner is the one that you want to no, look no, at. That's yeah. the original. The one. air cleaner is good. Yeah, but I saw the uh, the. What is that, a regulator? Right? Regulator, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you kept the six volt system. Kept the six volt, which is a pain. 
And it's uh, why? What's the problem with it? You know, it just doesn't have the cranking, and you know, I'm, it's this constant. You know. Well, I'll tell you something that you can do for this. I have a friend named Don Allen. He does a thing called a generator. He takes your six volt generator. He keeps it looking. Period. He installs an alternator inside it, ah. so it becomes a six volt alternator. So it's really bright wow. lights, it's great. And, it, and it keeps the power up. Because I know. I've got some six volts, and if you come to a light like my cord, you know, the headlights yep. would dim and the right. radio would go off. Then you'd rev it and it'd come back again because it couldn't put out the right. power. No, that's a great idea. But you can rebuild that. You can keep that in, and keep it six volts. Right. And you want to make sure you use six volt wire as well when you replace everything. So what are we talking? Thirty six horsepower. Thirty six horsepower. It's the original motor. I have the birth certificate from the car that I got from the right. Volkswagen Museum. So it's the original motor that came with the car. They weren't matching numbers. There was a motor number and a right. VIN, or body number, and they, they, they weren't the same, but this is the one that came with the car. I'm not a big fan of the matching number thing. To me, it's kind of like rich guys throwing silver dollars in the ocean. You right. get to the point where, <laughs> well, this one has match. Because a lot of, like to me, you find a 66 Corvette, and it has a 66 327, but it's not the same one that came. It's the same. Yeah. And guys fudge numbers and it just becomes a whole phony, so that's not a huge, but a huge I just deal. love that, you know, that, that yeah. this is the motor that came with the car. Right. You know, and it was, these guys were, the, the guys who I got the car from, they had gone through a, you know, a three-year period of lovingly, I mean, the scrubbing that went on this engine with, like, Dawn dishwashing soap right. and degreaser, like, it was it lovingly done. I shared, you know, with one of your producers, you know, some of the 900 photos these guys had taken. And of course, you kept the original distributor and everything. What, what kind of shape was the engine in? Did it require new pistons and everything like that, or was it just a? No, they were. You know, it was amazing. When I, and I, we went through all the details on the car, and because they, they really documented one of the beautiful things about the Samba, it was this full documentation of every step of the preservation of this car. And this wasn't a super expensive car. I mean, these guys just put, it was just, it was a love. Right. And, but they went through and they were really impressed that, the, you know, the crank and the pistons were still within really good tolerance. It didn't, it didn't need, it didn't, it wasn't in need of a rebuild. It was just right. time to rebuild it. And what, what's top speed, about 70, 60 Yeah, I'll tell you, with bias you, ply tires. Yeah, and keep your foot on this thing all day long. And yeah. it'll run flat out. Yeah, and you know, and I, we, I live at the beach. I live in Manhattan Beach. We have a couple of very steep hills there, and like, you know, it, it pulls fine. Yeah, yeah. Salt air doesn't... Uh... You know, it's like, you know, I live on a, you know, living down there is like living on a boat. So, right. you yeah. know, it's a constant battle, but yeah. Now, is this the original green? That's the original green. Okay, so, oh, it's a little light. It almost looks like a military green, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, but you can see it's still on the fender here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, just, I look at, you know, and the thing that I love about it, if you look here, you can see that the fenders and this rear valance, they're, they're all the original ones to the car. Right. There's plenty of, you know, the, the, you just can't get that fit anymore. And then you got uh, the Venetian blinds here. Yeah, I found a set of uh, Gradulux Venetian blinds, new old stock. You know, I got those in my Citroen. I go, oh, these are great. I go down the road. And go, yeah, yeah, I know. I have <laughs> them. I know. I know. I, I, yeah, I know. It kind of drives every me pothole. Crazy. Every pothole. The um, yeah, and I found a. Uh, you know, I wanted. You know, again, I'm, yeah, it's kind of hard to out Google me, and so I found a lot of interesting little bits, like yeah. you know the plates, and then I found a. I wanted a plate frame that was you know kind of from the kind of close to where I live, and it's right. the dealer in Compton that I haven't been able to find anything about. But. Okay. Oh, very cool. Oh, Huey, what is that? Huey Rohde Motors in Compton, which is, you know, ungoogleable. Well, somebody will watch. Somebody yeah. will watch this. And, and, yeah, and I remember us. Huey. Yeah. yeah, very cool. And it's amazing. Never been damaged, never been hit. I mean, you figure they made 15, no, maybe 20 million of these things. Right. And how many remain, really? You know, it's, it's, they were used up and thrown away, and well, a, probably yeah. Myers Manx had more to do with destroying well, or just, Volkswagen. Yeah, or Myers Manx. There weren't, weren't that many of those dune buggies, but like all of the Baja bugs. Yeah, they were all. You know, our friend Rod Emery is going to come by. You know, his father invented the Baja bug. Right, you right. You know, was responsible for a lot of these getting you know kind of converted. But you know, to find one, you know, again, these are not super expensive cars. Right, right. But if I if I said, hey, here's Fifty thousand dollars, or seventy-five thousand, or a hundred. Go find me another one. Yeah. I don't know if you could. Right, right, right. Can we open the front trunk? Sure. Let's see. I'd love you to see it. So I'll open this for you. Okay. Well, there's a rare piece. I haven't seen one of these in a long time. But that's a, 
either a water tank or a spare gas. Spare gas. Okay. So I wanted, you know, the, the, the holy grail item is that toolkit right. that fits in there. And they were, you know, hard to find. And I found this, um, this piece. A guy in Europe had it, and I thought, well, that's a kind of a cool thing to have. Now, and I've actually used it. Is this a Volkswagen piece or is it an no, accessory? Aftermarket. Aftermarket, okay. And your gas tank is what, about seven gallons? Seven gallons yeah. with a giant original uh, yeah. gas cap. And the big radio in there? Big radio. The, you know, the thing that was great is the, um, the glove box is hard to open. Yeah. So having it hard to open meant that it preserved the original box insert, which you kind of never see, yeah, yeah. and the original fuse block here. So the original fuse block with the... Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so... Was there a cover on that originally? No, they were like that. Just like that, mm -hmm. okay. And what, did, what is this here? So this is the previous, the previous to the previous owner had ordered from Volkswagen Museum the birth certificate for the car. So I'm going to cover up his name. It was Larry, ordered it. Yeah. But it's the original... Um, oh, all the documentation. Documentation that this was the motor that came with the car. And, Right, yeah, it's kind of right. nice. You can still get that from Porsche. It's from like a Porsche. Ferrari certificate of classic. Or yeah, or a it. COA from Porsche. Yeah, there you so. go. That's it. There you are, but it doesn't cost you $25,000. Exactly. exactly. Well, very cool. I the other thing that's interesting about the car, Jay, is that, you know, if you remember, in a hurry, a lot of guys will, would slam these without undoing this. So it was a constant Porsche and Volkswagen problem. And so this one, luckily, had been lovingly, the, the hood had never been crimped. So what happens if you don't, yeah, because right. of that, you kind of slam it. Yeah. They always get crimped over here. And this, this one's never been crimped. I think it's time to take this for a ride. Actually, it goes very good. Yeah, it runs good, right? Yeah. My dad would say, zippy. You know, I remember right. when these, my dad would say, you know, these foreign jobs, you can't I mean, get parts for <laughs> Any car that wasn't made it is a foreign job, my dad would call it. It's so funny. You couldn't get parts for it to get a, 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 yeah. And that was a, the dealership where you worked was a multi-brand dealer, right? Wasn't well, it? When they I all was were, a, I guess, when right? I was a kid, they, we were called foreign motors because right. we had Rolls-Royce, Bentley, Mercedes, Peugeot, uh, Citroën, a couple of other, you know, it just, you know. The only ones that really got the American market was Mercedes-Benz. Right. And they were teamed up with Studebaker. Right. Up to For distribution, right? Yeah. When I was a kid, every school teacher, if you were a single lady school teacher, it looks like it. this is usually what you had. Because, <laughs> you know, you'd buy it because it was reliable and dependable. Right. And I mean, that was the whole thing of these cars. It was the dependability. Right. They didn't break down. They were air-cooled. And they had the best ad campaign in the company. I can't no, they did. No, they did. there were amazing ads in the 60s. I right? can't remember who was the uh, ad agency, but you know, I bought a lemon and they right, show you right. the car and Think Small. And they right. had a little tiny. No, the Think Small thing was unbelievable. Yeah. That was a, a super, you know, current. And it floats. That was yeah. the other one. But you know what's so funny? You could use this every day. Like I, I use my Model T a lot in LA. Right. Because nobody's going more than 30 right. miles an hour anyway. In fact, in London now, the average speed has dropped from 8 miles an hour to like 7 point something. Wow. It is now slower than a horse and wagon was in the wow. late 1800s. You can actually get around, uh, get around London quicker in a carriage then than you wow. can in an AMG Mercedes now. Right. Yeah. But I think that what will happen when self-driving becomes more of a thing, then driving will be an enthusiast yeah. thing. Driving will take, well, you'll get the fun of driving back. Yeah. It's like, I didn't even bother fixing the radio in this car because I love the way Volkswagen sound. Yeah. You know? No, semaphores. You hear it? Modern Volkswagen on our tail. But there's plenty of leg room. Lincoln could drive this thing. Yeah. Look at it. <laughs> with the hat, with the hat on. Top hat on. <laughs> the thing that's funny is it drives incredibly different depending on who's in it. So if you're by yourself, yeah. it's a much different drive than when you got someone passenger. It probably feels faster. Yeah, much faster. And if I got my dog, my 80 pound dog in the back, yeah, yeah. then it changes everything. Now, is your goal to find an even older one, like a 48? No, I mean, you know what, I don't, 
like I don't have like I'm really stoked with what I have. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not like there is no like quest for it. And like, you know, when I found the '55 Pre A Porsche, I'd been chasing a 2002 TII that had been in a garage yeah. two blocks from me for three months, and the guy was just panicking and wouldn't sell it. And then he uh, like he finds out I'm just not going to sell it. And then the next day is when I found the Porsche. And I wasn't looking for it. Yeah, yeah. You know? So stuff just happens. And I'm always amazed at how maintenance-free air-cooled cars are. I've got right. a 1915 Franklin. And really, I haven't done anything to it. There's no water to corrode or, or to, to... Yeah, no, it's like the, like the electric car. Yeah, yeah. This is the kind of road this car was made for. Yeah. This little... There's just, I just love the way it sounds. I, yeah. I love this car. I love the way VW sounds. But, you know, I remember growing up in Massachusetts and my dad's friends. And if anybody bought a foreign car, well, you were a weirdo. You right. know, it was like, hey, he's kind of a strange duck. He's got a Volkswagen. <laughs> right? What? what? Yeah, you know, the German thing there with right. the little, you know. Well, take us to the dashboard here. We have our, obviously, our compass. Is that yeah. working? No, that's not that working. It doesn't seem to be working. No, not All working right. so well. Okay. And then tell me about that. So this was an aftermarket clock, and it's really just a watch. Right. But it was made by this company, Comfort, and it's a wind, it's, you know, you wind it. Right. But it's, it's just a magnet. So, I love that. But right. the key, what is this, choke? That's a choke. Uh, original, you know, the big M radio, which is very correct. This now, is an original. Now, would that have been in German, too, or is that just an American? That was an American, it, but this car was set up for a radio. Right. So, it, you know, it had that, and that was the original radio to it. Glove box, which is, you know, I think I pointed out, luckily it was hard to open because it preserved the original Yeah, you can get one glove box. in there. Yeah, one glove. It's got the original package tray. Now the package tray is really cool. Yeah, you kind of need it. That's for like magazines and things like that. Yeah. What is it, a rope-like material? Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, it feels like, some, it's it's plastic, but it, feels, it reminds me of like cat gut from old tennis rackets. Yeah, yeah. You know? And this one? Uh, headlight. Oh, this is a parking light and headlight. There's two separate. Okay. Then you have a fog light switch over here, and your yep. speedometer, which optimistically goes to 80. Yeah, I think that that is optimistic. Actually, it climbs hills very nicely. Yeah, no, I think it's, they're pretty. I mean, it makes me happy that you like it because I, I there's something special about them. You know, when I was a kid, I never thought I'd like when they would say certain cars you cruise at 45 or 50. It seemed like it would drive me crazy. Right. But this is actually yeah. quite relaxing right. to drive. And it's, it's every, all the steering, everything is so light. No yeah, traction they're... control, no anti-lock brakes. It's like a McLaren F1. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy these little history lessons as much as I do. You know, uh, this is great fun. It's only 36 horsepower, but it feels very lively and fun, and we're going 50, 60 more than keeping up with traffic. And it's got that just dependable hum in your ear from the back. I mean, these, these old cars are a lot of fun. This shows you that you don't have to spend a fortune on collector cars, because sometimes a great collector car is just a car that's different, you know? And it's funny for me to say that, because when I was a kid, everybody had these. But if you were born after 1985, this is like a whole new experience. Right. So if you find one of these old, old Volkswagens around, take them for a ride. I, I, think you'd be, uh, I think you'd be surprised just how much fun they are. Matt, thank you very much thank for you, Jay. saving this piece of history. No, I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>